is about to start. We we'll talk about code or whatever we'll talk about today. It's about to start, so please hang tight while I check that everything is okay. Sound check, camera check, lights check. How's my hair? Oh, wait, I don't have any hair. Maybe put some pants on and I am good to go. So get ready wherever you are. Cause this stream is about to start. Get ready wherever you are. Cause this stream is about to start. Hi, I am Lenny Facchinetti, this is Aria, and we are going to write some code together. How are you doing, Aria? Um, I'm doing okay. I finished my mix um, that I've been doing for, for way too long. I have a timer on my project, so I know when it's been like a lot more than it should be, but I am happy and relieved. Um, <laughs> yeah, how are you? I am good. How long should a mix take and how long did it take? Um, if I'm mixing another, like, like another person's music, usually within like maximum, like eight hours, I'm done. Maximum, maximum, sometimes two, sometimes four. Um, and part of that is maybe because like, I don't want to overstep. Like I may have some uh, some crazy ideas. I won't execute them or I'll ask them about it. Um, and then, you know, fin finish the mix like in, in like two to four hours, maybe do a couple of revisions and I'm done. With my own music, it takes longer because whatever idea I have, I'll follow. And I also just use my music as like lab rats. So if there's like some weird thing I want to try, um, I'll use my music to try it. So if I want to put a reverb on the master, which I've started doing, or if I want to like put a delay on the kick or whatever, I'll do all that stuff on my own music. And sometimes I like it for a while and then after a while I throw it away. So it takes a lot longer. On this track, I, I have a timer plugin on my project, I already had done 44 hours. 44 four hours for a song that is how long? Uh, that's four and a half minutes. Wow, that's a lot. It, but yeah, I don't think it's it only mixing. It doesn't include so editing. It's, it's also some experimentation. Yeah. Yeah, experimentation, plus there was some editing involved because um, Basically, the person who recorded this, who was going to mix this, kind of dropped out in the middle of the project. And then they gave me a bunch of stuff um, from the project, but it's not everything. So it's not like all my takes. So the take that I had, I had to basically edit um, to make it sound better. So there's some of that stuff. But also, like, I think I did a mix. I asked people, they were like, the drums are too buried. Um, so, so I brought that out of the mix and then caused a bunch of other problems and solved those. But yeah, it's too, it's too long <laughs> to do 44 hours. I don't know how much of it was for the betterment of the project. You know, after a while you're just going in circles. You're like, drums are too quiet. You bring drums up. Now bass is too quiet. Now you bring bass up. Yeah. Now everything's too loud. Now you bring everything down. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, do you usually have separate sessions like today I am doing editing and tomorrow I'll do another se session where I will be mixing this and then or, or do you like just see what the song needs and you go do it and then the song needs something else you go do that. Um, yeah, I try to be like more organized with that stuff. I try not to like jump from branch to branch. Um, 
But with Reaper, yeah, with Reaper, I honestly do my editing and mixing in the same project. It's convenient enough and I'm like confident enough that I can always get back. Um, yeah, it's, it's just Reaper. But yeah, like, like back in Pro Tools days, I would have a recording session, then an editing session, then a mixing session, then a mastering session. Um, and now, no, and now it's all in one place. Unless I do, like if I'm doing an album, then I'll bring all of them into a mastering session. But otherwise, like, yeah, it's convenient enough to do it all in one place. And when you are working on a client project, how much is too much in terms of changing things? Like, do you change a guitar tone? Do you change uh, something drastic about the vocals, like making them sound like they are in a completely different space from where they're recorded? Or how how creative can you be and how much do you just go with what's already there? Mm. Well, you always hope that what they give you is really good and it just needs like a second ear to kind of um, to kind of just revise it and make sure like nothing is like too egotistically mixed high or whatever. You know, sometimes somebody like they did a recording and then the guitarist was the one who did the initial balancing. So the guitars are way too loud. Um, so that's what you hope for, but that's not like what usually happens. Like sometimes you need to kind of change things to make them kind of um, sit better. What I really like to do and what I have done mostly is that the stuff that I've mixed has been the stuff that I recorded. So that's really cool because you can kind of pitch your ideas at the recording stage. You can kind of try to dial in the tone at the recording stage and make sure they like it before moving forward. But like, I don't know, COVID, COVID kind of fucked that up. Uh, if I have a really outside the box idea, I usually pitch it to them. Um, and I say like, no worries, blah, blah, blah. But that once did backfire. Like once I was like the last pre COVID project that I was doing, I kind of pitched some ideas to them. It wasn't even something too crazy. They just had these, like they had this chord progression that had like a staccato chord at the top of each measure. And I just put a delay on it so that it had a little more like rhythmic interest and they like really hated it. And after that, the project kind of just went cold. I'm not saying like that delay thing was the thing, but maybe they just, I don't know, they just thought, oh, this guy is doing too much. I was just constantly like pitching ideas to them because they were three guitarists making an album. So all their ideas were guitarist ideas. Their drums were written by guitarists. Like everything was a guitarist thing. And I was like, hey, how about a thing here? How about a thing there? But I don't know, that uh, it went cold. <laughs> hmm. I feel like when you are doing this professionally like you are, uh, being nice to work with is as important or even maybe even more important than the technical skills. So th probably for these people having a mixing engineer who is just going to balance what's already there would be ideal. While for someone else, they would really value the kind of out of out of the box kind of idea that you bring to the table. So. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I think people, people also just, I don't know, I've, I've had this only since I've done this in Canada. In Turkey, I never had this problem. I would like pitch ideas. But people also have this other side worry that's like a financial thing. And it just really turns me off. And I think it hinders creativity because they're like, oh, if we if we say yes to this delay idea, is he going to ask for like an extra cut? Is he going to ask for writer's credit? And it's like, dude, I seriously do not even understand that side of things like writer's credit shit like that. Like, let's just make good sounding music. You're already giving me money. I don't want like anything from the future. And like your project didn't go anywhere. So people already have these like massive capitalist ideas for a band that hasn't formed, that doesn't have really a long-term plan. 
and all of that like gets in the way of the music. It's like make a few albums. Like let's see if anybody wants to buy your shit. Then think about credit. It's good to think about it. It's good to think about it. But like really, like I don't know. I have this side paranoia that those dudes were just worried that if I like pitch an idea to them and they say yes to it, that they're gonna have to like pay me extra for it. And it's like no, like you're already yeah yeah you know yeah. I guess worst case scenario, you become Taylor Swift and you don't have your masters and then you just say, fuck you, I'm re-recording it. So not mm -hmm. a big deal at all. And I guess yeah. it's a great problem to have. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if you're Taylor Swift, like worry about the business side of things, but like your first EP, let people steal it, whatever, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like um, I actually... This is a big tangent, but the first song I ever recorded, I put on SoundCloud and I put the Creative Commons license on it. And like three years later or something, one of my friends wrote me and he lives in Denmark and he's like, hey, some, uh, somebody's using your, your music for a political campaign here in Denmark. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. He was like, no, it's not cool. They're like the ultra right wing, anti-immigration, like let's let nobody into Denmark party. And they totally had the legal right to make my music. So I'm not saying what I did was correct, but like it's your first EP, like make the shit first, then start to worry about like, oh, writing credit. Yeah. Like, let's see if you get anywhere then, you know. I completely agree. I think that we should do awesome stuff and then give it all away. So <laughs> there is this, there is this piece of software. I forget what it was, but the license for the software was like, it is free as in freedom. You can do whatever you want with it, but do no evil. And then some big mm. company, I don't remember which, probably IBM or something, got in touch with the developer and said like, I mean, we get where you're coming from, but can you remove that clause? <laughs> mm. Like maybe creative comms. Because also what's evil? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess that that political party is the definition of evil. That polit political party yeah. in Denmark. And I think ultimately it's like, all right, it's like that, that happened. I didn't mind it too much. I honestly thought, okay, well, this is a cool story. I'll tell lots of people in the future. Check. <laughs> and like, I don't know, like, I, if anything, it shows their choice of music is really bad because the music is like so soft and like not a song that you would think would be like appropriate for an ad that goes like, wouldn't it be great if there were no more immigrants or something? Yeah. <laughs> and the irony of choosing a song written by yeah. an immigrant. <laughs> oh, the yeah, irony. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, all right. But that's not what we are here for today, is it? <laughs> we are here for your website. Yes. Let's try to work on that. So what do you have? Sure. You have four new commits here. What's going on? Uh, yeah, so so you can get those. I did the reordering stuff. I, I did some reordering. I actually am having a problem now um, where when I do the NPM start, it's all Gucci. Uh, let me see if it is all Gucci. Oh, no, yeah. It says app crashed waiting for file changes before starting. So, like, I can still, like, I'm still making, like, markdowns and stuff, but HTMLs aren't generated. And if you go to the website, all the text is there. Everything is, like, the data is there. But, like, the layout of the site isn't there so it's just white screen black text um kind of deal uh, if you go to like the the blog section and click on one of them oh that one works from my end it's not uh, let me go i am on the live Let's version see. by the way i'm uh, not running this locally so maybe that's yeah that's it um, let's see. Oh, so I like went to the live version of this one. Let me post that to you. Um, which I guess, oh, okay. For that episode, it makes sense because 
the 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 page I'm working I'm looking at is a new blog that I made. So it's a markdown and the HTML hasn't been generated for it because I get this other error. Um, which says app crashed, cannot find module gray matter. <gasps> Is it because I need to run npm install That's again? That's it, yeah. Oh my God, I'm so dumb. I just got to talk these things through. <laughs> but I immediately like freak out whenever anything happens. I'm like, ah, <laughs> npm install. Uh, do you hear a lot of clicks? I do. Um. Oh, in, in my voice or in my voice yes. stream or let <laughs> I was recording something, so my buffer size was super small. That should be better. It sounds good on my end. Maybe the maybe in the on YouTube it's different. Yeah, it wasn't sounding too too good on my side. But now it is. Now it's okay. So here are some HTML that was generated. So I suppose that it's all fine. It, you just have to install because we installed a new dependency, the gray matter for parsing the front matter, all that good stuff that we talked about in previous weeks. So yeah, you need to run on your side npm install. So now npm install won't run. So that's another thing mm -hmm. that's happening. Yikes, what happens? Just nothing. I hit enter and it just goes to the next line on the terminal. Mm. So you say npm install, enter, and this doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Do you want to share your screen? Sure. Um, um okay so i'll go to okay i can't click on it um yeah so like this extra new line uh, that uh starts at the top doesn't start ah uh, okay i think i know do i know what's going on can i see your terminal again <laughs> Sorry, uh, I thought hiding it will just hide that notice, but it just hit nothing. Uh, okay, that's going to be there, yeah. Uh, that is, I, I think I know what's going on. So can you hit Control C? And I mean Control, I don't mean Command. Control C. Yeah, hit it. There you go. So now something happened. Okay, so it, the issue is that you were running the server. So when you said npm uh -huh. install, you didn't really say npm install to the terminal. You said it to the server, but the server doesn't really know what to do with that. So it just ignored it. Uh, and now if you run npm install, okay. it will install the dependencies. Showing, there we go. All right. And now you and can then npm after start. install, I just go start, yeah. And now um, it should succeed. <laughs> cool. Um, I guess I'll just do this and then push what I have. Uh, can you get the <laughs> hell out of here? Eh? <laughs> uh, this is another mi very minor thing. But this DS store, I keep adding it to Git ignore, but then the next time it shows up, like I'm okay living with it, <laughs> but. Uh... <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the DS store real quick because it's kind of uh, uh, an interesting thing for you to know. So usually when you have a project, you have this file called .git ignore, and we do have that in your website. And the purpose of that file mm -hmm. is to say what files you don't want to have in the Git repository. Usually the mm -hmm. files that you would put there are, for instance, the files under node modules, under the node modules folder, for instance, right? Because mm -hmm. the, those are the files that we need for development, so to speak, not for really running mm -hmm. the website. The website is just a bunch of HTML files, so we don't need like the markdown parser in there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the, the git ignore mm -hmm. for the project. But that's not, not the only 
level of Git ignore that you can have. You can have, besides the Git ignore at the project level, you can also have a Git ignore at your conf machine level, at mm -hmm. the user level. And the result is the same. You put some files, you list some files in the uh, user git ignore, and it's going to be ignored, but then it's going to be ignored in every project. Mm -hmm. And while the result is the same, it's just ignoring some files, the intent is different. The intent of the git ignore for a project is to ignore files that belong to the project, like the node modules folder has to do with your project because your project is using node. If you were mm. doing a, a project in like C++, for instance, like we are doing every other Tuesday, and Fotis is a part of that, and Fotis is here. Hello, Fotis. We are about to say something that may be of your interest. So when you are doing a project in C++, it doesn't really make sense to ignore node modules. It makes sense to ignore some C++-related stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's the intent of the project.gitignore. It's to ignore stuff that has to do with your project. The intent of the user.gitignore Get ignore is to ignore files that are generated by your operating system, by your text editor, by some other tools that you may use, but they're not really part of any project. For instance, and mm -hmm. I guess this is like the canonical example of this, the .ds store file. In macOS, mm -hmm. when you go visit a folder using Finder, you can say that that folder needs to appear differently. Like maybe you want to list files, yeah. or you want to show thumbnails, or you want to order by name, or you want to order by date of creation. All of that information is stored in Finder using this .ds store file. And it litters your file system with that because every folder that you ever have opened in Finder may have a .ds store file in there. So this is a prime yeah. candidate for a global git ignore, for a user git ignore. It will be ignored everywhere. And it has nothing to do with the project, it has to do with your operating system. So if you were in Windows, you would be ignoring other files. If you were using a text mm -hmm. editor that is not Visual Studio Code, like maybe you are using Vim, so you want to ignore some Vim backup files. Vim mm. is a different text editor. It creates backup files similar to the Reaper back, back, backup files. So you would want to ignore those. So you see, it depends on the, your tools. So what you want to do is to set up a global git ignore for your mm -hmm. user. And it's really easy to do that. I guess I can assign that as homework to you. Just Google for... GitHub, global, git ignore, and you will find, sure. and, and it's just that GitHub has a nice documentation on how to do that, but it's not a GitHub thing. It's a Git thing. So remember that Git and GitHub, cool. they're similarly named, but they are not the same thing. So Git is the tool and GitHub is the service. So it's like Git is email and GitHub is Gmail or Microsoft mm. Outlook. So. What you want is to configure. Cool, yeah, I found it. I found uh, the the instructions. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, it's relatively simple. You just have to uh, fire a command on the terminal, and you have to create a file somewhere, and in there you put .ds store, and then it will be ignore it. It will ignore that .ds store file everywhere in every project that you ever use. And Bo is here. Hello, Bo. It's great to have you here. So we have been talking now about things that are probably of your interest as well. So, yeah. Uh, so now the issue is, if you see your .git ignore for your project, you see a bunch of .ds stores in there because every folder you have ever opened in Finder has a .ds store yeah. file in there and you told it to ignore, but it keeps popping back up because there are other .ds store files everywhere. Yeah. So let's clean this up because you will create your .ds store ignore mm -hmm. that will be global, but we want to remove all of this from the project .git ignore because it doesn't really belong there. Oh, uh, I see that you have pushed changes. So I'll pull the changes to uh, avoid conflicts before I start doing the work. 
you need to clean up your repository. Okay, I will clean up my repository. Discard everything. I need to or you need to? No, I need to. Because I have okay. run the server before and it generated some HTML that was conflicting. So right, now I have the same version as you and I can come here to your git ignore and delete all the DS stores from there because it doesn't really belong in that dot git ignore. But we also have to search any dot DS stores that we may have over here and get rid of all of them just to make sure because you may have committed some accidentally and then they will mm -hmm. be there. And now if I open- Oh, the definitely connect, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if I I'm open in my finder, that. then your settings would apply to my finder. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. So you can see, for instance, my dot git ignore global just looks like this single single line. I just ignore the S store. Cool. And then, uh, yeah. So I guess the command that you have to run is something like git config global core dot excludes file is equal to this. And then you have to create that file. So that's what you're probably gonna find in the GitHub documentation that I told you to look for. Right, mm. so now we need to do another trick to find all the files in your project here that may be DS store files and we want to exclude from uh, the project. So uh, I'll do this in two steps. I'm first going to find all the DS store files. So for that, I will run file dot. Uh, no, I will run file star star star. No such file or directory. Come on. Should be able to do this without looking up the documentation. Uh, I name dot. No. No. <laughs> oh, man. The, if it's like, uh, like, if it's not a pressing matter, we can also deal with it later. It should be relatively straightforward. I just, I need to look up the documentation. So file, Unix, command, line, list, uh, oh, files in directory or something like that. No, not with ls, I want it with file. Come on. There was a time when I was able to do this without looking it up. No, not with ls. Oh, come on. List all files in three. No, not like that. Come on, Internet, don't fail me. This is like Unix 101. I guess I probably could use Finder itself, but in Finder, you will not be able to see the DS store file because Finder hides that file from you. Even if you try to show uh, hidden files and folders, it still doesn't show the DS store file. Do you know this? How you, there are more folders than you see? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are hidden folders. Yeah. Yeah. But is yeah, we press Command Option and period or something. Yeah, it's Command Shift and period, and then you see the hidden Command files. And... But then, not even then, you yeah. see the DS store files. So for that, you really need to use the command line. And what is up with that? I will have to look up the manual for file. It's not file. It's find. There you go. It's find. Now it's going to list all the files. And then I just grab for .ds store. And these are all the DS store files in your project. And I can just rerun this with pb copy. That's going to put that in my clipboard. And then I can paste this here. And these are all the DS store files. And 
it seems like for whatever reason we have two of these slashes. So these are the files we want to remove essentially. Let's just double check that everything in here makes sense. Yep, it seems to. So then we can say rm. Oh, uh, no, I don't want to run the command like this. I want to make sure that I have quotes, just in case there are some paths with spaces. Doesn't seem like there are, but there may be. Never know. So, and I will even use single quotes just to make absolutely sure that nothing weird is going to happen. And something weird happened. Jesus, I are you hearing my voice normally right now? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Why? Uh, just cause my computer is giving all kinds of weird errors to me. Hmm. Unrelated to the project. Yeah, I think it was because I had uh, two Reapers open. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, so we had a bunch of the S star files, but only some of them were committed. Only, it seems like four of them were committed, and we are getting rid of them now. So moving forward, this may cause some weird issues when you pull these changes. I'm going to push and you can pull. So. We'll see if okay. something weird happens. Yeah, and Fotis can hear some slight crackles in areas where, and I, I hear them too, but I already increased the buffer size, so it's only in every so often. It the, could be on my end, because I have like, um, I, I may have some extra stuff open. I see. It may also be here, I don't know. Uh, Visual Studio Code seems to take a lot of resources. Right, so we got rid yeah, of all the yeah, DS exactly. stores. And I think that now you should be able to pull, and there may be some weird conflicts when you pull, but after we solve these conflicts, it will be good moving forward. Um, cool. Right, so now you have ordered your tags and yeah the order of business here is uh, do you mind if i just remove these extra spaces they bother me uh yeah yeah go for it okay uh, I did. Um, oh okay sorry when i'm trying to pull it says unable to pull when changes are present on your branch the following files would be overwritten ds store <laughs> You can stash your changes and recover afterwards. I don't even want to. I'm okay with them being overwritten, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess you are okay with that. So can, do you have an option to just overwrite everything? No, it just has stash changes and close. So I said stash changes and then I can go discard, I guess. I suppose. Okay. And but now but now all these DS stores that you deleted are in my change log to commit. So can I just discard from here? Yeah, discard six selected changes. Yeah, do that. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Is everything um, okay? Clean. <laughs> yeah. Am I am I still crackly? I I changed a bunch of stuff. Not to me, but uh, okay. Fotis, let us know. And Bo as well. I can close Visual Studio Code if, if like, um, or I'll, let me just close it. I'll reopen it if I need to. Okay. I say, oh. For me, at least, it seems like opening it and sometimes opening new files is uh, yeah. it, it consumes a lot of resources, but just leaving it open is okay. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's try to to move forward with this. So we already have the tags file and the first order of business is to use this to generate the blog page, the slash blog page that lists all the posts. 
But really, really, the first order of business is something that I noticed when I was just looking at your website the other day, and it had nothing to do with this, but it's such a quick fix that I'll just squeeze it in here. Um, Localhost, let's see if it, you fix the issue or if it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. So this link is not working. You can see on the lower left that it tries to go to localhost slash mail space to blah, blah, blah. And if oh. I click, it doesn't work. It doesn't send an email. So okay. what we want to do is look for mail to, and it seems like it's not here. And Odd. It should be in the index.js file um, or index.html even. No, but index.js. Um, there you go. Here it is. It's yeah. mail to without a space. Oh, okay. There we go. That that does it. Yes. Now you can see on the lower left, it says mail to info blah, blah, blah. And if I click on this, it's going to open on my email client. And I am afraid to do that on this stream, but here goes nothing. Don't do it. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And some private stuff that you shouldn't, shouldn't see, but it's there. And here yeah, it, it exactly. created this window. Cool. Um, Okay, so I will commit this, and it's a change that affects every file because it affects the template that exists in every file. Yeah. But it not now it's done. So let's scroll down on this same file, and this is the part that is currently generating our current slash blog. It looks like this, and what we want is to start to transition into something that looks more like that. So let's go maybe side by side and take note of what is different. So it's going to create blog slash index HTML and it's going to use the layout. This is going to be the name of the file and the body. So this is already different because here we were just going over all the markdown files and now we no longer want to do that. We want to go over the tags.json file that you very carefully organized, right? Mm -hmm. So this file looks like this. So I iterate over all the entries in this object. So first of all, I read the file and I parse the contents. The result is going to be this object. Then I go over all the fields in the object and I map all of them. Each field is going to be a tag. And then the value is going to be posts, which is another object. Then I create a details tag for each one of these tags. The summary is going to be the tag itself. And then the value that you see under the details is going to be mapping over this other object, so this one highlighted, mapping over dash, and then there is the URL over here, and then there is the don't really use this situation that is this title that I am now using, but I should instead be reading this and getting the title from there. Then I produce the link by slicing this out of the end, and okay, all of this looks fine. Let's see if there's something in here that we want to keep. I think so. I think that this part that is grabbing the title, we probably want to keep. So I don't want to go over all the files in the file system. I do want to do something that looks like that and maybe even grab the image. So all of this stuff I will want to keep. And also this. Or maybe even all of this. 
because this is getting a hold of the title and this is getting a hold of the image. So I think that all of this may be useful. And then all of that can go away. And naturally, I'm just storing this for later so I can comment all of this out. Now, when I run this, I, I just saved the file and because the server is running, it already started regenerating all the pages. So we don't really, we are not really interested in regenerating all the blog posts. We are interested in this. So I am also going to comment out this part that is generating all the blog posts. But this is something that we want to not commit. <laughs> we want to never commit this part. But now it is just going to skip ahead. It's not going to regenerate each blog post, but it will regenerate the blog slash index HTML. This one. At least it should. Let's see. Okay, so now it looks like this and it's listing all the tags in the order that they mm -hmm. appear in the tags JSON file. Mm -hmm. And in each one of the tags, it is listing the blog posts in the order that they appear here on the tags JSON file as well. Mm -hmm. Now, moving forward, we need to style this page and we uh -huh. need to grab the title from the markdown file because this is just for your reference. We don't want to use this. Uh huh. And uh huh. Um, do you want the image? Um, I think like with images, it may be too much scrolling required. I'd like to be able to see like the maximum amount of stuff without, uh, without having to scroll. Okay. You know what I mean? Sounds um, good. And also, I guess what I'm noticing, I guess well, that's part of the styling. It's just not doing a line break between two links. So that is part of the styling, yes. Of but you don't care about the image. So let me get rid of the part where I'm grabbing the image. This also has to do with the image. And oh, by the way, I am curious. What did you decide to do with the tags on the metadata on the post itself. You just let them there. Okay, we're not really using this, but it's okay. Um, we're not using the, which one we're not using? We're not using this. Oh, aren't we? I thought that's what we're using for the header, uh, like how it's categorizing those. Well, we are using, the, there is redundant information over here as well, right? I can look for LLS slash one and it's replicating this information. Let's run, learn scripting in Reaper. Let's learn scripting in Reaper. So this information is in two places and to make sure that everything oh, is consistent okay, okay. and everything. It's in the name of the video and it's also a tag. No, it's just because it the tag is both here and here. So this infl information is duplicated and I have to pick one to look at. So I'm looking at this oh, one because okay. it's ordered. That's why I prefer this one. So this one, you can leave this there. Doesn't harm anyone. It doesn't work for anything either. It doesn't do anything. Oh, you mean like all, all the tags that I put on videos? On the blog not post. Not specifically this episode. No, not specifically this episode. I just mean that you have this gotcha. information about the tags. You have the the tagging, so to speak, in two places. You, you have duplicated yeah. that information by hand. You have gone here into this blog post and you said, let's learn scripting in Reaper. Then we went over here and repeated that. Let's learn scripting in Reaper. So now this information is in two places. And from our code perspective, we have to choose one place to look at. So we decided to look at this one because it's ordered. So this 
is being yeah. ignored by our program. And if you don't want to keep this, if you don't want to have to maintain this, it's fine. It, it's not being used for anything. But you may want to have that there. It's like this title here. We are not using it because we are using this one. So. I guess, what about dates and stuff? Because those, we don't have a space for them in the tags.json. So do I keep those in the in each blog post and then for the tags, I'll just update the tags in the JSON file. That's up to you. Um, you can do this. If you feel like it's better to have the dates here, you can have the dates there. If you, f if you think that it would be nicer to have the date here, we can do that too. You can just have an object here that says title is equal to dash and then date is equal to this. And then all your mm -hmm. metadata would live in this file and you wouldn't need even mm -hmm. need this at all. I mean, you could also bring the related posts to here. Mm -hmm. um, no, let's keep it how it is. And I guess in a while, like, like I'll work with it a little bit. And if I see one is better than the other, uh, I'll do that, but um, yeah, if there's a little bit of redundancy in the code, like that's fine for now, because I guess that led us to generate this page, so so I can now go and get rid of the tags and keep the dates or something. Okay, so let's uh, not use this. <laughs> right now we are using the title that is from here, and again, it's duplicate information because the title is also on the post. And I think that for the title, you probably yeah. wanna have it in the post. So this is just for your yeah. reference. We don't really use it, shouldn't really use it here in the post or in the blogs page. So let's uh, use this block of code that we captured from above. And we have to do that at this level where we have access to each post. No, at this level where we have access to each post. So. Um, yeah, right. Okay. So what we want is to enclose this with that and like this. And, and this is literally the same as what we had before. It's just written in a different style. But now that it's written in this style, I can have more statements in here, including this statement and this file markdown. We probably don't want to have file markdown. We just want to have the URL, so to speak. So maybe I will rename this to be file markdown. And I have to remain, rename that too. And that will have, that will parse the front matter using gray matter. It will get the data and the content. Then we parse the content to generate the document. And then from the document, we can query selector H2. Sounds good. And then we can do this and this thing that we shouldn't be using. We are not using anymore. It changed color. I don't know if you noticed this, but now it's slightly darker because it's not being used. Mm -hmm. So we did it. And now when I save this, it is, oh, it crashes. This function needs to be asynchronous because I am reading files in there. To make this asynchronous, I have to change this as well. So I have to see await promise all of, uh, where does it end? I think it ends here. No, it ends there. There you go. Now we have it. And no, uh, await. Is it the await the issue or the missing closing bracket? It's a syntactical issue at this point, it seems. Prettier. 
Uh, the await bracket thing is like a different color. Is that significant? There's a dollar sign, then the second dollar sign is a different color. Yeah, that's... I just look at color. <laughs> that is significant, and it's kind of a cute trick, because in JavaScript, let's take this tangent real quick, because it's kind of interesting. In JavaScript, you can have strings like this. And these are strings that you also see in Lua, and in, even in JS effects, so that's familiar. But you can also delimit strings using backquotes. That's cool. But what's the difference? Well, when you're using backquotes, you can have this kind of situation here with a dollar sign and the curly braces. And in here, you can run some JavaScript. So it's going to compute whatever is in here and then splice mm. it in place. That's nice because if you were to do something similar in, like let's say that it, it reads like this. If you were to write something like this in Lua, for instance, you would have to say hello space and then you would have to close this string and then you would have to do your computation and then you have to concatenate again and then space and world. So world. This is much nicer to read. I think so. Anyway, the designers of Lua said that Lua is never going to have this feature because they think that this makes the code too complicated. But I really like it. So I came up with this package called Leafac HTML that gives you this. It's another part of this story. So if you have something like this, then you can have a tag right before the string, and this becomes like a function call of sorts. So I can do any kind of processing I want. And that's super convenient because sometimes I am interpolating here instead of two plus three, I am interpolating some dangerous user data. Ooh, if your mm. app has user data, which is not the case, right? In our little static website generator for your blog, you are generating all the data. So there is no user data, there is nothing to worry about. But when you are interpolating user data in your HTML, that can be dangerous because the user data may be something like, what's your name, sir? And, and then you would have something like yeah. this, uh, like, hello. Name, how are you doing? And then someone comes along and says that their name is equal to script. That's a script tag. And in here you can run some JavaScript and then you could run some JavaScript to run the function like cue the babies and everyone would be sad, right? So when you are mm. interpolating like this in HTML, I wrote this library that comes with this tag that will automatically interpolate the value safely. So if you have script tags, it will sanitize the script tags, which is just take them out. It's gonna take this out. Mm. Okay, so far so good. But sometimes you want to interpolate HTML because you know what you're doing. You're not interpolating dangerous user data. It's just some, some more HTML here. That's exactly the case here. We have some HTML going on and we are going to interpolate not dangerous user data. We are going to interpolate some stuff that we are generating, like more HTML that we are generating. So we know what's going on, that's safe. So I wrote the library using this cute trick that is not really JavaScript, but I just look at this string. So the string that is coming right before the interpolation, does it end, so the string that comes right before the interpolation is the thing I highlighted. This dollar sign on the right is part of the interpolation. The dollar sign on the left is just part of the string. But I, in my clever little library, mm. look at this and I see, oh, if you the last character here is a dollar sign, then don't do the escaping because it is HTML that is safe. Trust the programmer. So you see two different colors here because this one in blue, is for string interpolation. The one in white is my clever little trick to say, don't 
interpolate this safely, interpolate this dangerously, because I know what I'm doing. So, cute little trick. I wanted to show this off because I like it. Yeah, shows in two different colors. So, this is this is literally part of the string that, of course, I'm gonna take out when I'm doing the processing here. How do you like that? <laughs> yeah. Right, so, but there is something else that is wrong and it doesn't seem to be the syntax because prettier is happy. So it means that the syntax of this file is mm. supposed to be right. So I suppose that the problem is the await. Is this a function that is asynchronous? No, it's not. So we need to mark this as asynchronous and we need to say that this whole thing, we need to await promise all. And then we need to find the closing of this map, which is right here, and then enclose the whole thing in parentheses like that. And now it runs. Hey. And it finished. So let's look at what we have here. And I expect to have the same, except that these titles will be coming from the right place. And there you go. It's the same, it's except that these titles cool. are coming from the right place. Let me prove that the title is mm -hmm. coming from the right place by going to maybe... I believe you. <laughs> well, I don't. So let's see. This first one is this file. Let's visit that file and change this to never. Well, trust, but verify. And then save that, and that's restarting. So we need to wait for this for a moment and then refresh this page. Trust but verify, right? That's a good policy. So that was part one, getting the data from where it really comes from, from the right location. Part two, is to style all of this so it looks like it should. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, just have a bunch of links. So I think that what we want, the meaning of this is that it's sort of a list. Yeah, let's make this into a list. So we'll have an unordered list, or maybe it is ordered. It is ordered. And then each one of these is going to be a list item. Just like that. And this is already going to put everything in their lines. I think that next mm -hmm. we should have some indication that the thing is open or closed. How about mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like a drop down thing. Yeah, something like that. So maybe for that I can borrow something that I wrote for uh, some other project. Sure. Yeah, let's see. There are two things that I want to look at. CSS and course lore. CSS, let's go to the source and look at what we have for details. Okay, I am hiding the marker in for summary, I don't have anything. So what if I just don't hide? What would that look like? Let's see. Ah. I don't think I can grab this using, can grab that element using this. Interesting. All right. 
let's put this in our CSS. Mm. Yeah, let's try just dropping this, in, dropping this into our global CSS in whatever place, really. Well, um, display inline block, probably. Something like that. Let's see what this looks like. Eh, doesn't change anything. Go figure. All right, let's move down to here and into the summary. And yeah, I think I, I think I know how to style this. Your frame rate started going way down. I don't know why, but. Probably because oh, I am moving good. in Visual Studio Code. Uh, yeah, probably because of that. So let's do something silly for a moment. <laughs> and I want this if i am under a details that is open well a details that is not open No, I, it's the opposite. If the details is open, then hide this and hide the other one otherwise. So I can flip between what I want to show when one is hidden and when the other is hidden. Does that syntax work? I don't think it does. I think it needs to be like this. Okay, there's a slight chance that this may work. Let's check it out. Okay, smiley face. Oh, other face. It works. Okay. <laughs> so now we just need oh, to... Oh, wow, interesting. So now we just need to decide what we want to show there. Typically, it is a triangle okay. to the right and triangle to the bottom, but yeah. there are other options. We have this font that has all sorts of cute icons that we can use. So let's mm -hmm. let's browse, let's I, shop. I think the triangles are awesome, but I'm thinking what if there was a reaper -y, uh, way of showing that, but I can't think of anything. Well, it needs to be um, clear. It needs to be in there. Yeah, it needs to be yeah. clear. No, I think on. the triangle is like the 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 best way to go about it because like everybody understands it. Fair. Uh, yeah. And maybe I will make Reaper videos forever. Who knows? <laughs> so let's see. There is a carrot now. Can I have some other carrots? Carrot right. Yes, carrot yeah, right. So on carrot right. So copy this. And the color we can change, right? Yeah. So the closed one is to the right, and the other one, I think it was down. And then we can change the color of this. Yes. Let's first see if it's showing up correctly. I use some other icon libraries in course lore, and I use another icon that I kind of mm -hmm. like. It looks like this, uh, like this. Expand, I don't like it. It's it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> I'm Fair. not sure. Like I know cause you're telling me. So there you oh, go. That's lovely, yeah, yeah. 
And there's another detail, the cursor is wrong. It should be a hand. Uh, how, uh, oh, okay, the mouse cursor, okay, okay. Yes, the cursor should be a pointer. And you like hover over the stuff, yeah. Yeah, so I, I just fixed that. Now, when this is over, and it is over, and I refresh, now it's a hand. There is another Great. little thing that is wrong, which is when uh, when it, it expands, can you see it like jumping to the right? The oh yeah 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 like a half line or so, cuz the, the width I guess of the two icons aren't the same. Yeah, and that's for, for me a design flaw of this library, but it turns out to be the only library that has the icons for all the social networks we care about. So Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's very hard to notice. If you didn't point it out, like I wouldn't notice, but maybe designer people do. Um, so, but but totally can live with that. No, we are setting well. a fixed width for both, and then it's gonna be fine. It's just that we need to grab this guy and find a width that works. Uh, why are you not doing the thing? Do I need to say that you are displaying in line block? That's why. And four is too much. Two seems to be about right. Okay. And then wait for Wait for it. Oh, we waited for it. So now it doesn't jump anymore. How do you like that? Lovely. All right. So there are some more things that we can do in terms of styling on this. Like, for instance, you could change the color when you hover. You could do that. Uh huh. Um. So I guess it will amount to something like that. And on hover, but also on focus. So if the person is stabbing their way into the interface. Uh, so focus within, we want the color to be, do you want to have the same purple that we have everywhere? Um, sure, yeah. Okay. So, I guess it will be something like this. Now I have two of them. And the active doesn't really make sense for this situation. Or maybe it does, actually. Um, we will have something different, because active is not an event that happens in the summary. But we can check that we are on a details that is open and we are right inside of that. So when it's open, it's this color. All right, let's give this a go. So now it changes color when you put your cursor on top and when you click, it is going to be on that darker Violet. I know I'm not in love with this. <laughs> nice. I do like it. Yeah, that's good. You like it? Okay. Do you want to um, change the color yeah, of just the carriage? Oh, sure. Well, what do you have in mind? Uh, some lighter gray, something like that. Sure. Okay. So we can have maybe the one that is to the right, so the one that is open. Um, we could have a color. What is the color that we are using in the background? Just a regular color. It's this one. So if we want it to be... A, uh, we want it to be darker so that it looks grayer in comparison to the background. So instead of 200, let's go with 400. 
And then let's also have this whole shenanigans. So we'll change to a purple, but it will not be this purple, it will be a darker purple. And then when the thing is open, we'll have, I guess, the same colors. No, uh, when it's open, we'll go with the purple 600. Yeah. And when you hover, it will go to 800. So something like that. I don't know. I'm just guessing values here. Let's see what that looks like. So now it's a, a bit grayer. We could emphasize this and go even grayer, but I think that this is nice. It establishes a hierarchy between mm -hmm. this, which is decoration, and that, mm -hmm. which is the main thing. Oh. Mm. But the issue is now that the color only applies when you hover over it. two so, separate entities. Yeah, yeah, we need to fix the selector there. But let's see if we like the colors. I think that this... I don't think it should be darker. I think it maybe should be lighter on this one. Are we splitting hairs? Do you want to cut this? not change the color uh, of the character? Yeah, I'm I'm like impartial to both of them. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was a lot simpler before. Okay, so take this out and we are back where we started. Um, I guess if there was one thing I could change and let me know if this is like going to be crazy because I know like the whole website follows a certain spacing type, but for this page in particular, would it be possible if the width was longer and maybe we were seeing like two rows of stuff? Yeah, I think that makes sense in this context. Two we, columns. we have narrower yeah. columns on things like blog posts. And I think that makes sense because you don't want it to be too long. By the way, this link yeah. is not working, so we need to check that. <laughs> but text uh, makes sense. Okay. But this is not text. This is more like a menu kind of thing. So two columns makes a lot of sense for this. First, let's fix the link because that's bad news. So what's up with that? Can you, can you just test another link? Because it could be that that blog post, like something is different about it. No, we were able to get there, that... the title from there. So no, <laughs> it's just as slash. Oh, but um, like in the in the tag section, there's also like a YouTube URL thing that we're doing, and on that one, I noticed that I didn't put it. No, but no, 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 no. It, it is something else. We are reading that file. It exists. So it's just okay. this. This is weird. Isn't this weird? This is weird. What does the HTML look like? No, not this HTML. What does blog slash index look like? And I want in particular something that is near details. Yep, it's just a slash. That is weird. That part was working before. Okay, so all of this looks fine. And then we slice it like this. That is so weird. What could be going on here? We're just slicing that string, and the string is here. And yet, when we slice it, I don't see the issue. Mm. So, like now, if you click on any of the links, it'll just go to the main page, it'll go to the home page. Yeah. What is this variable? Is it not a string? It is a string. Can I slice zero? 
that should not change this string at all. Okay, I can slice the uh, zero. Can I ch slice minus one? That should take out the last character. Can I slice this length? Oh, hang in there. This has never worked because I forgot to say dot length. Huh. Now, this is going to show the link the right way. And it does, and I can remove this console log and rerun this and wait for it, and the links will work. Okay, the links work. Clicked on one of them, it works. So, um, let's see how we can implement the thing you asked for, where we have two columns. Uh, it has to do with the layout, because the layout is already giving us that narrower column. So what we want is to have another yeah. option um, on the layout. Maybe we'll call this option like uh, wide column, something like that. And yeah, I, I think that will do it. Or maybe two columns? How do you want to call this? Um, double column sounded... A wide column sounds good. Double column sounds good too. Okay, wide, wide column. And then let's visit the layout and add an option that will be, by default, false. By adding this uh -huh. default value, we don't change the meaning of any other place where we are using the layout. But we can go into the layout and find the place where we are doing that narrow column. And I know how to find it. It will be where we have a body variable, just like that. And then we can find a place right here where we are making that column narrower. That's this place here. So we can just check a wide column. If so, do something, otherwise, do the thing that we used to do. And now, this is going to jump to the left, but it's not going to be two columns yet, it's just going to jump to the left and it's going to mm -hmm. occupy more space. Right now, you can see that the space that this occupies is this place here. Uh, you can sort of see a different shade of purple to the sides, where there are like mm -hmm. padding. Uh, but now that I refresh, it goes to the left, and there is no padding cool. anymore. Now, th I think that this may be too wide, maybe? If it yeah, right, yeah, like maybe just slightly this way. -er. So how about Writer. we say that Writer. we, in the wide column, we'll do some calculation that is just two times the pros, so just two of them. And how about we add some space in the middle, like this. Now it will be wider, but it will not occupy the mm -hmm. whole screen. The entire, yeah. So let's see, I need to wait for it to finish and then refresh. So now we only see one of these guys but the space it occupies mm -hmm. is the space that two columns would have occupied. And then we can mm -hmm. say that we want two columns out of this. How do we do that in CSS? I forget. Mm -hmm. Wrap something? No, not, not W3Schools columns. It's as simple <laughs> as this. Great. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, doesn't really work, does it? So let's double check that the thing has applied as it should have here. Do we see columns? 
I don't see columns. Now, now it is there. Okay, it was just a matter of waiting Beautiful. to refresh. Now, there is a problem with this. So we may not As want to implement it this stuff. way. Yeah, when you click on something, the so the way that this columns CSS property works is it's going to look at the, co the whole content and it's going to put everything into columns. And that makes sense, except that when you click on something, then size of the content changes, so everything shuffles. Fun. Don't really like that effect. Yeah. So I think that instead of using this, maybe we should have, maybe we should do this balancing by hand. We can do it ourselves. So this is how this- I have work. another idea too, um, but tell me if this idea takes too long and it's too crazy. Um, so I remember you talked about like, should we have images in this page? And I was like, nah, it's probably like too cluttery, but maybe if it's possible to have a small image for each header, then it can be like that we make the dropdown file open into that header area. Does that make sense? So the image is quite small. Maybe it's like the equivalent, like its height is the equivalent of four lines or something. And then when you do the drop down, it drops down. I'm not sure actually. Or I guess my idea would be better if when you do the drop down, it shows the image to for the for the header. I'm not sure. As I talked it out, I'm like, I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll give you a second because I'm not really sure that I understand the idea. So let's see if you like it and if you want to explain it again. <laughs> um, I guess, do you want to check out how reaper.fm does it? They have actually three columns and I think they have a drop down menu but how are they doing it? Oh, okay, okay, I see. They have like more space, so more vertical space is created. Yeah, and the way but that I was thinking about are... doing it is exactly what they do here. They hard code that uh -huh. no matter what happens, editing, it's it's not up, in other words, it's not up to the browser to do the columns. Yeah. They're not using CSS to do the yeah. columns, they are or at least not the columns property in CSS to the columns. They said, okay, after editing, it's a new column. That's kind of yeah. in, uh, intentional here because um, it's kind of separated by, this is how you begin your first song and blah, blah. And then mm -hmm. this is like for knowing the basics and this is above and beyond sort of thing. So True. Yeah. They made it intentional. But there is an issue with this actually, with this implementation. And that is when you make it narrower, like when you are on a phone, it doesn't behave well. Uh -huh. So at least oh, our I version see. here could behave better. But that's, if you resize, yeah. yeah. I was checking that actually on the phone and then I realized, oh, it's localhost. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. I'm not in love with this columns situation we introduced, uh, but how about we just have it like this and we can say, okay, so after Reaper SWS extensions, then it goes to another column always and makes more mm -hmm. vertical space. Mm -hmm. Do you like that? Uh, yeah, and then something that I didn't do that I need to do is so I reordered the blog post within each header, but I want to also reorder the headers, but I'm assuming that's not dependent on this piece of code you're about to write. If it's not. It, if you want to reorder stuff, ends. just come in yeah. here and reorder this. Yeah. Like move this whole cool. block. Yeah. And there you go. The page will show differently. Yeah. Right, so uh, let's see where we have to dive into. I I forgot where we were, so I'm going to command Z a couple times. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are here. So this is just setting the width of the column, but it's not using the columns CSS property. Now that I save this, wait for it to do its thing and refresh in the browser, we are back to a situation where you have a single column. Now that we have that, we can dive back in here where we are doing all of this details work 
and we'll want to wrap the whole thing around or wrap the whole thing with a div like so and in this div I will want to have a style that is going to be some CSS that is going to be display flex and I want a gap of how much was it? Wide column. I think it I was think four. Said... It was four. Yeah. So I'll put that in there. And then we are looping over this and we need to decide how many of these we are going to put on the first column. So let's change the structure of this loop here and do something kind of hacky, a bit crazy, but I think it will work. Uh, what we want is this object's entry array. We don't want it entirely because this object's entry array is all the text. We want to split the text in two parts. So we want to split this array. Uh, where do I want to do this? Probably at this point. Or maybe here. Uh, it could make sense to do it just here. Tags is equal to that. Right, so I just extracted a variable, nothing changed so far. But I can turn this into a list where I will slice this from the beginning up to some number and then slice it again from that number onwards. So I will call this tags split point. And let's say that we'll go up to this one. So how many are there? One, two, two three, four, four, nine, I think. Okay, I'll take your word. So it's nine. I was wrong. It is ten. It's ten. <laughs> okay. So now that is a good number, yeah. That. And now this is not a map that contains text. This is a map that contains a list of text. So or a list that contains a list of text. So we need to map over that. Um And I will call this uh, tags column. And this will produce some HTML. In this HTML, we'll have a div. And in there, we'll have a map of the tags column. And the body of this mapping is going to be all of that. Very nice. And I just changed that tag split point if later I added more categories or whatever. Yeah. And then save this and we wait a little bit and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, it's a bunch of promises. Um, <laughs> Empty promises. Um, okay, so this is an asynchronous function. We need to await promise all. And where does this map end? There. And now that this is an asynchronous function, we need to say that this is asynchronous. And I think we are good. Second try. But, I mean, check this out. It's already two columns. <laughs> so that's good. Nice. And there you go. Uh, the columns should have the yeah, same oh, size. It's jumping around. So to fix that, we can go in here and we can say that every children of this will be flex one. So it takes the same size. And the gap in the middle could be a bit bigger, don't you think? It's kind of a gap in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Like if it's, I think the first column, the left column where it is. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, but I think that if 
we make things narrower. So let's pretend that we are not necessarily, oops, I clicked on something. What did I click on? On the second screen, there you go. So uh, maybe let's pretend that we are not necessarily on a phone, but on a tablet. So it's gonna become narrower. And at this point, it's gonna start touching. So I think that this gap in, this, in the middle should be double what it is. I guess at one point it'll touch either way, eh? Like Well, okay, I just made the gap a little small. bit bigger. So now the gap is going to be bigger, but we also have to decide like right now the gap in the middle, we can say that it's a bit bigger, so the columns are going to start as you see reflowing. Mm -hmm. But then there will be a point where it doesn't really make uh -huh. a lot of sense. Like when you are on a phone, it's going to be so narrow that it doesn't make yeah. sense to have two columns and we'll deal with that in a moment. I'll just, I want to put this here. Oh, we could do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so now when it's starting to touch here, you see that there is a bigger gap. I think that this is more appropriate. This makes more sense. The gap is mm -hmm. this, this size. But let's move the window around and decide when it no longer makes sense. I think that at this point it's too cluttered, don't you think? Yeah, and I think also I should, I can maybe make some of these tags a little shorter, like time, tempo slash time signature mapping and warping in Reaper. That's too much. I, I'll, I'll simplify some of this stuff. That'll help. I also think well. that we should have some space between these guys. Yeah, I'll add a space. That's quick. We can just go to uh, the up and down space. Yeah. Yeah. down space so scientific uh let's do maybe four and i i am going to claim that at this point it becomes too cluttered so around 560 pixels we want to break this so let's see where we have this and we can say that the maximum width of the rules that I'm going to write are five, five, nine pixels. And in that case, I want the rule to be flex direction column. And then when the minimum width for the rules that I'm going to apply is 560 pixels. And the thing I want to do is that gap. Or even all of this really only makes sense when you have two columns. All right, so let's wait a little and see what this looks like. So now there is a bit more space between the tags. That looks better, I think. Maybe it's too much space. But I kind of like it. No, I think it's good. It's it makes it clear that like there's stuff to underneath almost. Yeah. And then when it's it like becomes too narrow, so check this stuff. out. So we are at 700. I think it still looks nice. 600. So maybe we could change this to be even a bigger number. But when it gets below 560, it becomes a single column. It just goes. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. So on the phone, it's gonna look something like this. A phone is like. 320, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it looks like this. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Looks good. Um, so how about we change this number? Maybe 560 is too much. So maybe 600, I would say, is appropriate. That's like the threshold of when it will become a single column? Yes. And another thing is, I think we should have little indicators that these, like little bullet points over here. For each video, you mean? Like yeah. tick, 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 tick? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's a great idea. And I guess uh, if I had to nitpick, like at the very top, I would just say something like categories or something. Okay. So at the As very well. top yeah. over here. It can say blogs and then says like like a header that says blogs and then says choose a category below or blogs something. 
yeah, choose like that, and a category yeah. below. Yeah, and then I can, if I change the wording, I just know where to look. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's do some little indicators here, little bullet points. And for that, I will want to borrow from what I did in course lore, cause that's easier. So I can just check what I have for ordered lists. Something like this will be a good start. And let's find the ordered list. And let's see, uh, do we want gray medium? Uh, well, they're all links, so we probably want to go with the, uh, was it violet? Was it purple? Yeah, it's purple. And we don't need a different color scheme for dark mode. So this is like purple 400, is it? This is purple 200, so let's go with like purple 400 and see what that looks like. Blogs, choose a category below. No, it doesn't show up. That's too bad. Purple 400 could be a touch too dark. I think 200 is good. Okay, so in that case, we wouldn't even need that rule, but for whatever reason, it decided not to apply those sty that style. So what's up with that? <laughs> yeah, it was like whatever, man. List style decimal. Hmm. Hmm. And it is a direct child. Do I need to just refresh? Yeah, I just needed to refresh. Okay, so we don't want the numbers, right? We probably just want a bullet. Yeah, yeah, numbering, I don't think numbers are super significant. Yeah, so let's, instead of decimal, let's do disk. And you said that purple 400 was not good. So now that you see purple 400, I guess we can all agree that it's too much. So 200 was good. So in that case, I don't think I need to say anything. Because I think it would just inherit. Yeah, right. It, no, it's not. No, it's not. Because this color is applied by the link. So it's going to be white. <laughs> nope. What the hell? Oh, it's still running. Yeah, my machine is dying. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a... I, I'm also feeling like I'm seeing an older image. Yeah, but now it, it's it's white. It doesn't look too bad. I kind of like the white. But do you want to do purple? Yeah. No, I'm okay with white. So there you have it. Before my machine Looks dies, great. let's wrap it up. <laughs> and and this is working, right? I mean, this is good enough for your purposes. So we can actually push this, right? Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. Um, I guess I had two questions about the tags, the JSON. Um, and one is like, if I just go there and I rename a category, um, say like the one that says time signature, tempo time signature, uh, blah, blah, blah. If I just take a word out, I won't need to, I won't need to change anything on the blog post level for each one, right? As long as I rename that, that gets relayed to the uh, index. Yeah. Um, okay, that was my first question. My second question was if I add if I want to add a tag, do I just do it here? I just do it here, right? Yeah. I won't go to each blog post and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, that, this is a great system. Lovely. All right. So let's try to commit this and push. I will commit the index.js file. I will not commit the other one. I'll leave this to mm -hmm. you so you can run this yeah. 
Makes sense. Yourself. But let's review the changes. So mm. we added this notion of wide columns to the layout. And I kind of like this, makes sense to me. Then we change the whole lot, what happens in this, but just at a quick glance, it seems to make sense. Yeah, I think we have it. So commit and push cool. and, and goodbye, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, I was going to say, do you want to see the other website that's been generated with your code? But yeah. actually, as I'm trying to go to it, it seems like it's not online ah, right okay. now. But maybe we can look at that next week or something. Because, um, it's yeah, I, I'm also curious to see how it looks like. But I'm going to it. It's not opening right now. So we'll see. Okay, okay. Yeah, there is this other person, I think from Mexico, who got in touch and is using the same code base for a different website, right? Uh, oh, um, the, my friend is in Ghana. Hmm. He's, he's using this. Is there another person as well? I thought so, but maybe I'm wrong. Right, that's great. Uh, more people uh. using the project is... Awesome. I mean, it's very much in flux. So we just changed a bunch of things about how things work with the tags and everything. So I don't know how that person is going to keep yeah. up, but hopefully by watching the streams and applying the changes, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So my frame rate is like one frame <laughs> every other <laughs> second. <laughs> That's because my computer is dying over here. So I think it's time to say yeah. thank you very much, Arya, for letting me play around with your website like mm -hmm. that. I thank hope you're you. liking the results. And I'm loving it. Yeah, it's great. And do I see you on Wednesday for some more synthesizer stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's get into it. Um, yeah, Wednesday. And tomorrow is the not the week that we're meeting for the. Uh, the old C++ C++ stuff. So yeah, see you next week on that. Yes, tomorrow is JS effects and it's gonna be a circular buffer. We are circling back to that. <laughs> uh, oh, Air Windows is doing C for beginners. I may go check that out. Ah, that's good. I will check it out too. Right, so thank you everyone who was watching us uh, thanks Fotis and Bo and everyone else and I see you tomorrow for some JS effects goodbye <laughs>